This is lesson 5.3 bond enthalpies and these are the objectives for the lesson. Please make sure you remember the, av the definition for average bond enthalpy because they ask this in every second IB paper. All right, it's the amount of energy required to break one mole of bond in the gaseous state and this is the key averaged across a range of compounds that contain that bond which I'll also explain to you why the answer you get is different to someone else's answer. Uh, and so we're going to look at breaking the individual bonds of every of every single bond in every single compound and we're going to add them up and minus them uh, and to work out uh, what's going on. So for this one here uh, the reaction is always going to be reactants going down to the gaseous atoms and this one here down to the gaseous atoms and so we want to reverse this one obviously to get to here. Okay, so uh, here we go, we can see it here. Uh, let's break all the bonds of the reactants, let's break all the bonds of the products. Uh, if it, this is more, if the products are more stable and it takes a lot more energy to break them, uh, these must have been, uh, this must have been a negative delta H, uh, so that must have been an exothermic reaction and the products created were much more stable and there was uh, energy released. Okay, uh, the bond enthalpies uh, are from your data booklet. Uh, so if you see, you can see here if you've got a carbon chlorine bond, that's 324. Uh, these should be doubled up. Uh, here we go, carbon chlorine bond 324. All right, and the double triple bonds are below that in your data booklet. Problem one, calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction. Nitrogen plus hydrogen goes to ammonia. Now, of course, we're assuming we're using bond enthalpies this time to do this equation. Uh, so we need to work out what the formula is for that. So because we're breaking everything up uh, into, their, into their atoms in gaseous state, uh, we're drawing lines from the reactants and from the products. Uh, so in order to get from reactants to products, we have to minus the products to reverse that arrow. So the tricky thing here uh, now is, uh, apart from not writing the equation as a, as a source of error, uh, because you haven't worked out the number of moles by writing out the equation, the second error is not doing the Lewis dot structures, so I'm knowing exactly if it really is one a, a single bond you're breaking or a double or a triple bond. Uh, so I'm drawing the Lewis dot structures here. We've got hydrogen. Uh, do it the method I showed you uh, in a previous unit. Uh, so I can see here that nitrogen will only be happy if there's a triple bond, and ammonia has three single bonds. So I can go ahead and finish this off and look up in the data booklet nitrogen triple bond. That gives me 945. Hydrogen bond and the nitrogen hydrogen bond is 390. So write those out. Uh, the second thing you need to also, the third thing perhaps, is separate bonds broken and bonds formed because you, this is usually worth a mark and if it's clear uh, it can be easily given. So if you look here, bonds broken uh, for reactants, I know I need to times the hydrogen by three and so, and the nitrogen is a triple bond uh, and so that gives me a value of 2,250 2, kilojoules per mole. Uh, now write bonds formed uh, for the products uh, because I know that nitrogen has three single bonds uh, and the formula is uh, there's two uh, sorry ammonia has, and there's two of those so I times that by six uh, I can then uh, times that all out and get 2340 kilojoules finally minus the two from each other uh, this will help with error carried forward and get you an extra mark if perhaps you made something wrong there. Uh, and so the enthalpy of reaction is minus 90 kilojoules per mole. Moving on to bond enthalpies of ozone. If you have a careful look here, um, you'll see that this here uh, is a double bond and this here is uh, a bond and well, if it's O3, it's a bond and a half. All right, so you can see that uh, this one here is because it's only a bond and a half because of resonance that we've done in a previous unit, it's easier to break. So the point being when UV radi radiation comes in here, it's this one that gets broken, the O3, 
uh, and not the O2. So um, what we have here is O3 uh, breaking up into uh, back to the O2 and releasing this radical. Uh, that's not a valence electron, that's just representing this, a radical showing that the valence shell Okay, this diagram here just shows you uh, that the ozone molecule itself here is actually more stable uh, than the oxygen and the oxygen radical here. There should be a dot there uh, because their bonds here, the one and a half bonds here, are of a lower, lower energy.